Good evening and thank you for joining us for Krem to News 10 at 10 where we give you more news in less time. Let's get started and we kick things off tonight with weather after two days of sunshine. Snow is now back in the forecast. A winter weather advisory just went into effect for Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. Let's get straight to Chief Meteorologist Jeremy the Goo for a quick look at the forecast. Jeremy. Well, Mark, that winter weather advisory went into effect just moments ago and lasts through 10 a.m. tomorrow morning for a pretty widespread one to three inches of snow possible by the time we head out the door. And that one to three inches could have some big impacts on the morning commute. That's why we have a winter weather advisory in place. And there's the snow arriving just about right on time and spreading across much of central Washington and now the Palouse. We're going to watch that lift off to the north. And when it comes to this snow, we'll talk snow totals, but it's one of those interesting spring storms. So it hits Spokane about midnight, persists through early tomorrow morning. But by the time we head out the door, it does look like it winds down and moves off to the north and starts to dissipate. We'll see our next round move in as we get into Friday, and that one is even bigger. Let's talk just Thursdays, though. When it comes to that round of snow Thursday, one to two here in Spokane. Some places not too far from here could pick up even more with that snow coming down in a very spring-like manner. More snow expected Friday, and then we eventually dry out Saturday. All right, Jeremy, thank you very much. We'll check back in with you later in the broadcast. New tonight, Spokane Public Schools will officially part ways with Durham Bus Services at the end of the school year. Tonight, board members approved a five-year contract with a new transportation company. Kremtu's Kyle Simchuk is here in the studio tonight with all the details. Kyle? Well, that company is called Zoom, and it's already being used in districts in Seattle, Los Angeles, and Chicago. Their buses will be taking Spokane kids to school as early as this August. Brand new buses and better technology. Those are just some of the reasons Spokane School Board members approved a five-year contract with Zoom and chose to part ways with Durham School Services as their contract comes to an end. Every five years, SPS is required to get bids for transportation services. Durham and Zoom were the only two companies to make it to the final round. Durham did provide a lower annual bid estimate, but Zoom scored higher overall with references and in panel interviews. Board members were impressed with the technology the company brings with it. A single app will let parents know when the bus is coming, when their child arrives at school, and when they're headed home. A parent always wants to know where their kid is, mm -hmm. um, and we recognize that. And so um, that was, I know, something that was a priority for us going into this process and something we're really excited about, that there will be technology in place to, to really create that type of of, of linkage for our families to know where their students are um, at any given time when they're riding our transportation. The district's transportation panel also recommended Zoom because of the company's sustainability commitment. Zoom says its fleet is 100% carbon neutral and they plan to add more electric vehicles in the future. The nation is still facing a driver shortage and many parents have complained about Durham dropping their kids off at school hours after the first bell. SPS says they still have less drivers than before the pandemic, but are making progress. In Spokane, Kyle Simchuk, Krem 2 News. Two major policies on the table for Washington lawmakers today. First, a bill that changes police chase policies, and second, a gun safety bill that would ban the sale of assault rifles. Both made progress in Olympia today. Coming up in 10 minutes, we'll break down the outcomes. Across the border in Idaho, a bill adding human trafficking to Idaho's slew of abortion laws now moves to the Senate after it passed the House floor yesterday. House Bill 242 would make it a crime for anyone to take a girl across state lines to get an abortion that is without the parent's permission. If found guilty, that person could be charged with human trafficking. Attorney General Raul Labrador has said should this law pass, he plans to prosecute. Meantime, Washington Senator Maria Cantwell says abortion clinics in Spokane are already seeing a surge of patients from Idaho. She spoke on the Senate floor. She says the overturning of Roe v. Wade is impacting states where abortion is legal, like Washington. Abortion clinics in Washington are facing rising caseloads and rising costs. Planned Parenthood in Spokane reported that in January their clinic saw a 75 percent increase in the number of Idaho patients who are traveling across the line to get abortions. Cantwell says doctors are also concerned they could face legal consequences for performing an abortion on someone from a state where the procedure is banned. 
New tonight, former Seattle Supersonic star Sean Kemp has been arrested in connection with a drive by shooting in Tacoma today. Tacoma police say officers were called after reports of shots being fired between two groups of people in two different vehicles. One of the drivers fired several shots at the other vehicle with that vehicle leaving the scene. Officers found the suspect who fired the shots on Tacoma Mall property and took him into custody without incident. A gun was recovered from the scene. Kemp was a six time NBA All Star and played for the Sonics from 1989 to 97. He is also a well known Seattle businessman, open, opening rather two cannabis stores in Belltown and in Soto. Continuing coverage tonight on the construction site collapse that killed one person yesterday. Right now, we know it happened at a project site for a new hotel at the Spokane Tribe Casino. The construction company Swinnerton Builder said a form for concrete molding collapsed and that no other workers were hurt. The victim was 27 year old Anna Vetter. She was an active member of the Carpenters Local Union 59, who said today they want to do everything they can to remember their former member. The membership it has really been reaching out to us uh, and they, they want to do something, they want to help, right? And so um, <clears throat> it's more or less an outlet uh, just so that we can all come together uh, and honor her memory. The union is now planning a vigil for Anna Thursday at 5 o'clock. That'll be at the meeting hall at 127 East Augusta Avenue in Spokane. And now to our night beat with a quick look at today's top stories. Two schools in the Cheney School District were briefly placed on lockdown earlier today because of a SWAT standoff at a nearby house. That house was a half a mile away from the school and officers were trying to arrest a man for multiple charges, they said. That man was ultimately arrested and the lockdowns were lifted just after 3.30 this afternoon. Parents were then able to pick up their kids and take them home. Well, a man is dead after he was shot in Spokane, which police believed caused him to then crash his car. Spokane police responded to a rollover car accident near East Cleveland Avenue. When officers arrived, they found a man in the car and learned he'd been shot. Major Crimes is now investigating the death. At this time, no arrests have been made. Police arrested a 17 year old boy for shooting at an employee during an attempted robbery in North Spokane overnight. Police say the teen shot at that employee after he was confronted about stealing. The bullet missed the employee and the teen then ran from the store. He was later arrested several hours later. He's been charged with first degree robbery. And that was your night beat. To learn more about any of these stories, just text us the word night to 509-448-2000 and we'll send them directly to your phone. Well, March 8th is International Women's Day and around the globe celebrations and protests alike took to the streets. The fight for gender equality was at the forefront of protests today with crowds calling for better pay and solidarity. Here you can see protests in Sri Lanka, Iran and Afghanistan. Countries hit especially hard in the last year when it came to restricted freedoms. The UN says Afghanistan is the most repressive country in the world for women. And a Washington man faces eight felony animal cruelty charges tonight. The attorney general's office says Blaine Perez shot birds and squirrels, then displayed the animals around his property. He is also accused of shooting a couple's cat. If convicted, Perez faces a maximum penalty of 45 years in prison and $90,000 in fines. And the FAA is increasing its oversight of Boeing. It is adding 300 employees to its safety office. This is all in response to the issues uncovered after the two deadly 737 MAX crashes. A 2020 congressional report blamed the crashes on a number of things, including, quote, a lack of transparency on the part of Boeing's management and grossly insufficient oversight by the FAA, unquote. Boeing has not commented on the plan to increase oversight.